But I was nervous. I wanted to beat them. I did. And I knew we could. And the day before, I know we were listening to Beatles albums, and I don't know if Denise did the Pepto Bismol. I think I might have shared it with her. I don't remember, but I was a little bit nervous before that game. But when I got out there and started shooting, when the game started, then that all went away. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, you're watching the greatest, the two greatest scorers in girls' basketball history and the number one of two ranked teams battling for the state championship. It's all, all the papers and all the small, small town papers, as well as the Des Moines Register, the Cedar Rapids Gazette, the Davenport, Quad City Times, uh, you know, the, all, all the papers were there. It was a big media event. We walked in there and it was just packed right up to the roof. There wasn't a seat to be had. And uh, noise level was just unbelievable. I think a lot of people maybe were cheering for Union Winton because they were the quote underdog. They were number two and they hadn't been to state before. So we sort of had the feeling maybe that it was Everly against the whole crowd there. That championship game I didn't score until four minutes had, about four minutes had lapsed in the first quarter. Deb and I'd bring the ball up and you'd look down and there'd be three guards around Denise like this. You couldn't even see her. You couldn't even see her. I mean we kept trying, kept trying to feed it to her but we didn't have any guards, so I just started shooting. We got two guards working there. It shouldn't be long tonight. With two guards on Denise. I'm sure that they, their game plan was to double team um, and possibly triple team Jeanette. So the plan was usually set a screen, you know, pick and roll, get the rebound, get the ball to Jeanette. And I, I didn't have too much trouble scoring. Uh, uh, that game, but either did Denise. She d didn't have too much trouble either, unfortunately. And my shots were kind of forced, and, and and they were going they were kind of going in quite a bit, but they were being they were being banked instead of, and that, that made me feel like why are they going in? Uh, you know they're going to have to, you know I just couldn't understand that. And then of course uh, because I was being double team, triple team, Cindy took up the slack that first half, and she scored a lot of outside shots and. Um, but then um, I really got into my, uh, a lot of confidence. I think after the first quarter or so, I don't remember exactly, but then they brought a girl out for Deb and I, to guard Deb and I. And then Denise had kind of come out and I'd go under so that Denise would, they, she'd leave the guys, the guards down under there. And then she could shoot them from out too. She could make them there too. Look at that jump shot. I think we were behind almost the whole game till the very end when we kind of closed the gap. Exactly one minute to go. The ball is intercepted by Cindy Flesch, Jeanette Olson, to Scharnberg. All right, the gap narrows now to 4.49 seconds to go. Timeout is called by Union Whitten. Mary Hamill fouled Jeanette Olson at the line and reached in and tried to grab a, grab a ball that was being passed to her. A foul called! We thought, she's going to make these free throws because they were two points behind. She just sunk them. If she makes this one, the score is tied at 101. It's up. It's good. The score is tied. Jeanette had one last shot at the end of regulation, and it was like that would have been the, the real movie ending, you know, if we could have switched that one. It's so good. Uh, I tried for that the last shot of the game and unfortunately did not go in because uh, I didn't have a lot of time and don't want to make excuses. It just didn't work out. <laughs> I remember when we went into the huddle, Mary Hamill was just crying just profusely, just unconsolably uh, about that foul and about sending the game into overtime when we were ahead two points. And I, I, I felt so bad for her. I remember looking at her and saying, Mary, it doesn't matter. We're going to win anyway. Cindy Long. Denise Long. Denise lays it up there and shoots and scores. Basically, I think we kind of confused the Everly Guard Court during the overtime because Cindy went and played underneath in the post area and I, and I stayed out front. I thought we may have had the opportunity to go ahead, but it just didn't pan out in the overtime. I think the overtime, we were confident enough that we knew we were going to beat them then. There you have it, 113 to 107. I'll tell you, you talk about the passion, the sincerity. You couldn't tell the winners from the losers because they were both crying. They were all crying all over the place. 
it's not something that you can really compare to anything else. It's like being the best at a sport in the whole state, being the best, nobody could beat you. It was, it was a thrill. It was, it's something I'll never forget. It's something that was part of my childhood. It's uh, something that brought two towns together like nothing else could. Um, pride. I was devastated. I could not stop crying. Our hearts were just broken, absolutely broken that first day. As time went on, you know, then you could appreciate the incredible experience that that game was, win or lose. Uh, we're still talking about it. Here it is, 2006, and we're still talking about that game. Uh, it has gone in the, the memory books of everybody who liked basketball. Every once in a while, the kids at school will ask me, oh, I hear you're a pretty good basketball player. And I, you know, way back when, yeah, in ancient civilization, yeah, I did play, you know. <laughs> I'll go into a Casey store to buy a thing of pop. People go, are you Denise? Now we know that you're one of the longs. Are you Denise or Cindy? Did you used to play for Union Winton? Didn't matter what town you walk in. I've had people do that to me, even out of Iowa. Even when I moved to Mount Vernon, the banker here recognized my name and knew about the Everly cattle feeders. And to this day, he, he still says, oh, there's that Everly cattle feeder. Got a lot of lessons from basketball. I, I, it just, it made life better. I mean, I was, I have no regrets that I, that I can think of because it was just a highlight of my life that I'll never forget. It, it made me a better person uh, as far as um, um, trying to, you know, reach goals and trying to apply that in life as well. I set a goal for myself, and I worked really hard for it, and I, I accomplished a dream. But I still have dreams that that I have another year of eligibility left <laughs> and want to get back on the court. So I would encourage all girls to find a sport and, and go for it. Would it be safe to call this Union Witten team the greatest of all time in Iowa girls basketball? Well, we'd better wait till next year and we hope that you'll be with us again for another great championship game. Good luck and so long till then.